All right, everybody, welcome now to Investigation 2B, which um, is a little different from 2A. 2A talked about everything on the surface of the Earth, but um, one of the things that meteorologists really care about, in addition to the surface of the Earth, is what's happening in the vertical of the atmosphere. And this might not seem very interesting because people go, well, why do I care about the weather 10,000 feet up? But the fact of the matter is, is that what's going on up there greatly influences what's going on down here near the surface. And so we actually really do want to study and understand what's happening in the upper atmosphere. Um, also known as aloft. Uh, another term that we use for the upper atmosphere is aloft. And the way that we in the meteorology community do this is by launching weather balloons. Um, there's about 70 different locations around the U.S that every day at the exact same time at um, midnight UTC and um, noon UTC, and if you remember UTC is the time in Greenwich, England, um, that at, at the same time every day, over 70 stations launch weather balloons into the atmosphere. And these weather balloons, as they're rising up, they're constantly taking temperature measurements, air pressure measurements, um, dew point measurements, wind direction, wind speed, and all the different things that we want to know about the upper atmosphere so we can then get a better sense of how is the weather up there, how are things changing up there, and that helps us predict then how things are changing down here. Now with that said, um, once this is done, you end up getting a pile of data. And this pile of data, um, if you're just staring at a table of it, can be very overwhelming. Well, one of the tools that meteorologists have to help uncover this data is what's called a Stuve diagram. And for this activity, we're going to look at Stuve diagrams, and you're actually going to get practice plotting some data on a Stuve diagram. So let me just first talk about how a Stuve diagram works. Um, if you've taken a math class before where you've plotted points on an XY, um, on an XY graph, this is basically the same thing. Um, the difference is that in this case, temperature is going to be our X value and altitude is going to be our Y value. And basically all we have to do is then plot points for those corresponding values. So a point for altitude and temperature where, where they intersect and then we connect the dots. So let's do that. Um, so here we have three points. We have three points. And what I always recommend doing is starting at the surface with the lowest point, an altitude of zero, and then working your way up. So this first point down here is zero and positive 15. So all I'm gonna do, put a little dot, it's okay if it's not perfect at zero and then positive 15. The second dot is at 11 kilometers and negative 56.5 degrees Celsius. So I go up to 11 kilometers. It's going to be halfway between 10 and 12. And then I travel over and you kind of just eyeball it. Um, I'm not going to be too stingy on, you know, is this perfect or not? And then again, place a dot right there. And then what I would do now that I have those two dots is I would want to draw a line connecting the two dots like so, just like that. And again, I didn't have like a straight line ruler or anything like that. If you want to make your plot look better using any kind of straight edge, um, a ruler, or even the side of a sheet of paper could really do wonders for you here. Um, and then the next dot is at 16 and again, negative 56.5. And that's gonna be up here at a height of 16 kilometers and negative 57 point, or I'm sorry, negative 56.5. And then you connect that. And what this is, is this, this line is what we call a temperature profile. And basically it just shows 
how temperature changes with height in the atmosphere. Now this particular temperature profile is actually a very special temperature profile. This is what's called the US standard atmosphere. This is basically the baseline, the average that meteorologists use to determine, okay, do we have warmer than normal temperatures higher up? Do we have colder than normal temperatures higher up? So this is kind of our baseline. This is what would be considered normal. And there are a couple features here that I want to talk about. Um, the first feature is right here between the surface and 11 kilometers. If you notice, between these two, these two heights, you have a declining temperature with height. And that should be pretty straightforward. Um, here in the troposphere, the lowest layer of the atmosphere, we have that. We have a declining temperature with height. Um, for the most part, sometimes near the surface there's a small layer of increasing temperatures. That's called an inversion. Um, but normally, on average, as you rise up in the atmosphere, temperature declines with height here in the troposphere. And so this whole area here is our troposphere. Sorry for the very poor drawing. So troposphere. Okay. And one of the questions asks you between zero uh, kilometers and 11 kilometers, how does, the, um, how does the temperature change with height, or what is the rate of change? And if you've ever done rate of changes in a math class, again, it's, it's rise over run. Um, basically, this diagram is almost a sideways version of that. And if you wanted to calculate change with height, how much temperature changes per height, all you have to do is divide the change in temperature by the change in height. And so I, sorry, I drew, I drew that equation right here. Change in temperature by change in height. And the change in temperature, you would take the temperature at 11 kilometers and you would subtract the temperature at the surface from it. So you would take negative 56.5 and subtract 15 from it. And you're going to get some large negative number. I'm not going to tell you what it is, again, because I don't, want to, um, I don't want to give it all away. But then you're going to take that, and then you're going to divide by the change in height. And here we went from the surface to 11 kilometers, so that's a change of 11 kilometers. So you're going to take this number and divide it by this number, and that's going to give you a rate of change. And basically what it's going to tell you is for every kilometer we go up, this is how much the temperature is declining. So for every kilometer we go up, this is how much the temperature is declining. Okay, now if you notice, the, the next thing I want to talk about is, and let me change my colors here, is if you notice after you reach a height of 11 kilometers, the temperature stops declining and instead ends up not changing at all with height. Well, there's a few things going on here. The first thing is once the temperature stops declining with height, that is what we call the tropopause. That is what we call the tropopause. And the tropopause is where the troposphere ends and where the stratosphere, that's the next layer up in the atmosphere, begins. So everything up here is the stratosphere. S T. I'm just going to write strato just to save space. But yeah, this is the stratosphere. So everything above this height is the stratosphere. And in the world of meteorology, the way that we determine this is where near the top of the chart does the temperature stop decreasing and start in, or it, it just stops decreasing altogether. Um, it could either start increasing a little bit or it could just go straight up like this. And wherever that is, is 
the tropopause, the top of the troposphere. And above that is the stratosphere. The last thing I want to mention is you're going to see a term here a few times in this lab for um, this area right here where the temperature doesn't really change with height. The term is what's called iso isothermal. And last week we talked about what were called our last uh, module, last investigation, uh, investigation one, we talked about what were called isobars. And an isobar is a line of constant pressure. Iso means same, and then bar meant barometric pressure. In this case, isothermal means same temperature. Basically, in this particular location, sorry, let me get my cursor here to, okay, there we go. So, in this location right here, the temperature isn't changing with height. It stopped changing with height. It leveled off. This is isothermal. So this is isothermal. And so when you see that word later in this investigation, when you hear the word isothermal, all it means is simply, okay, temperature's not changing with height here. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about is you're also going to see a few questions that talk about how much of the atmosphere is above you at a certain location. And it, it may be complicated and it may sound confusing, but it's actually not that bad. Um, and here's how it works. So the average pressure near the surface of the earth, near sea level, is a thousand millibars. And then as you rise up in the atmosphere, remember, pressure decreases with height. Why? Because you have less atmosphere above you. And what we can actually do is use that pressure to tell us how much atmosphere is above us. If a thousand millibars of pressure is near sea level, 800 millibars would be 80% of the atmosphere above me. 80% uh, of a thousand is 800. So all you really need to do when determining how much of the atmosphere is above you is take your pressure level, whatever it is, and just drop the last zero. And that gives you a percentage. So for example, 100% of the atmosphere is above 1,000 millibars. 50% of the atmosphere is above 500 millibars. 10% of the atmosphere is above 100 millibars. So really, again, just drop that, that last zero. Um, or if you don't like dropping things, you can also just put a decimal between each of these. So 20% above 200, 30% above 300, 40% above 400, and so on. Um, now with that said, unfortunately that first example of the US standard atmosphere, this thing right here, used a method that you're never gonna use again. And here's what I mean. All future Stuv diagrams we draw in this class, you are not going to use altitude as your y coordinate. So this cursor likes to disappear from me from time to time. Um, you are not going to use altitude as your y coordinate. In all future exercises, all future plots, you're actually going to use pressure as your y coordinate. And the reason why is because that is a more accurate and more useful coordinate for meteorologists. Um, for example, let's say I'm, a, I'm an airplane or I'm in an airplane and I'm flying over a location. I don't necessarily know exactly what height I'm at um, because I can't just send a ruler out of the side of the airplane and extend it all the way down to the surface. But I can determine what my air pressure is. And then using my air pressure, I can then calculate what my height is. So for all future reference, we're actually going to be using air pressure as our y-coordinate.